Hey everyone, I am Kate. Welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for tuning back in. Today I want to discuss life's ultimate truth. Now I'm sure that there are going to be different variations on what life's ultimate truth is and I think that's fine and fair um, because the whole premise of life's ultimate truth with me is the fact that we don't know. We don't know a single thing. We like to think that we know things, but the reality is that we don't know. Uh, with that, I want to explain, um, sorry, I just noticed this and I think it's really funny because, so I just got this mirror tattoo. I don't know. Okay, there we go. So it's a six of hearts and this one says magical. And so anyway, I'm sitting here looking at this bag and this is why I got the six. <laughs> Not because it's right here on this bag, um, but I mean, this is just like too perfect right now. So my thing, I'm going to explain this really quick. You, a lot of you are familiar with my hearts. I know you are. <laughs> There's at least 365 days worth of hearts on my YouTube channel and how they miraculously come about into my life. Um, with that, the number six has the same effect in my life. I just don't rant and rave about it. I do with certain people. Um, but the hearts are just easier for people to like see and understand, but the sixes are just as, as evident in my life. Um, so again, I just thought that was really cool <laughs> to see like, you know, and just as I'm recording, I'm like, Oh, look, that that's a six right there. Just like the one I got tattooed on me. And why did I get it tattooed on me? Because they're everywhere, just like the hearts and, um, just really cool when I come across them. So uh, anyway, with that being said, <laughs> just like we didn't know this video was going to take its own like side turn bar, whatever, and uh, go off on a tangent about my new tattoos. Anyway, whatever. Uh, so back to the entire premise. <laughs> oh, Hold on, because right now I know nothing and I need to figure out what I'm knowing so that I can articulate properly. Um, so, okay, I'm going to just start this back at where this all pretty much started. Um, I had somebody jokingly, you know, good mannered, you know, Hey Kate, how's it going? What do you know? And I don't really think it was meant to be answered, but anyway, here I am. I know everything, anything and nothing at all. And he chuckled. And, you know, I thought that was really funny because earlier today I'm talking with another good friend and we're talking about how I've been experiencing extreme fear lately and just how extremely uncomfortable it is to go through that. Now, these have been associated with this fear, which is extremely intense, de debilitating fear, has been associated with panic attacks, anxiety attacks, which you know, can be one and the same, depending on who you're talking to, um, and anxiety in general. So to really put it into one category, uh, we can try to do that all day long. I don't really care to do that. I just know that this may be a symptom of one of those things and whatever. I just know that I've been dealing with extreme fear lately in conjunction with other things as well. But really it's this fear that I want to, um, discuss with everybody because it is debilitating and it has made me so extremely fearful that I've had knots in my throat and it's made it to the point where I'm so sick to my stomach I'm about to dry heave and I can't get out of bed and you're just fearful and it sucks and you don't know why right and now I don't do the whole prescription drug thing so um, this fear has been so intense that I have started to consider it to get it to subside so that I can actually just maybe focus on what's going on. Well, I haven't taken that measure yet and I'm not pill shaming anybody or anything of the such. You have to do what works for you. For me, I feel that I'm able to manage myself and my mind pretty well. And so it's important for me to explore that alternative first. And so in doing so, again, talking with my friend about me feeling all this fear, 
and what I've been doing to contend with it and how I'm managing it and what I am doing. So initially it's coming on and I'm just sickened by it because, you know, it hits you and you're just like, oh my God, I'm just like so scared. And like, it's so hard to explain when you're not going through it. And luckily right now I'm not. Um, and that's the thing is comes and it goes. It's like a wave. It's not fun because you don't know when to expect it. It just shows up and it's almost like a surprise that you didn't really want. <laughs> so, you know, um, again, talking to him about feeling this fear and how it is debilitating and what I am doing to manage it. So, you know, it hits me and I'm just like, oh my gosh, what is this? What's going on? I don't even know. I just know I'm incredibly scared right now and scared of what. And, and so the first thing I started to do with myself is kind of sit with the fear. <sighs> okay. I'm scared. Like I am scared. So having to admit to myself that like, I'm feeling this and I'm feeling it so intensely that it is having a physical effect on me. So again, admitting that, allowing yourself to feel like, okay, I'm scared, I'm scared. Okay, okay, I can feel that. I know that that's what that feeling is. Secondly, is to then start to figure out, well, why am I feeling this way? You know, what is going on that is making me feel this way? Well, I ask the question and my mind starts conjuring up, you know, a rather negative narrative. Like, hey, Kate, this is going on, that happened. Um, you know, that situation in particular. <laughs> and so, you know, thinking that it knows exactly what's going to happen. So the mind is really controlling that narrative. And so when I realized, okay, well, I'm scared. And it's because at this point, my mind is running these ideas that I don't like through my head. So what do I do about that? Well, I'm going to going back to and again, having this conversation with my friend today and telling him how I was asked, what do you know? And again, how my answer was everything, anything, and nothing at all. And then I proceed to tell my friend, now ask me a question and let's see which category my answer falls into. And, you know, I started laughing because I think I'm hilarious, <laughs> but uh, I do think that it, it it's funny. And so that is what I started doing is I started to ask myself these questions, you know, um, challenging my own mindset, challenging these preconceived ideas or these ideas that my mind is, is now presenting to me as you're freaking out. And this is why this is the answer to why you're freaking out and me not being okay with that answer. So having to open up my mind to the fact that, you know what, I don't know anything. I don't know anything. And you would think that that's almost going to pres like breed more fear. Like, Oh my God, I don't know what's going to happen. But in all actuality, for me, it alleviates it. And my belief as to why it's alleviated is because I feel that once we, you know, our mind is here saying, we, we know, we think these things are going to happen. And so you're in that negative mindset. But when you start to say, like, I don't know what could happen. I don't know. And that's the truth. That is life's ultimate truth is that we don't know. We think we know. So when I sit there and I tell myself, so you know what? Sure, all these things could happen, but I don't know if they could happen. It kind of opens up this whole other door of possibilities for my mind to then start saying, well, okay, we were here, but now we don't know. So let's like kind of expand. <laughs> let's see what else is out there instead of all this crap I'm feeding myself. But I really feel like it's, it's a conscious effort you have to make. You have to be willing to tell your mind, I don't know, instead of like, oh my God, these, these things are, you know, playing out in my mind and I'm freaking out. And you know, you have to really take a step back and say, it could happen. It could not happen. I don't know what could happen. And so, see, the mind is really good about telling us <laughs> what it thinks is going to happen, um, but not only with us, but it likes to think that it knows, you know, hey, if you make, you know, me telling somebody else, hey, if you make that choice, this is what could happen or this is how life works. And we think we know everything, not only about ourselves, but about everybody else. And the reality of the fact is that we don't know a single thing. We like to think that we know, but we don't know. We do not know what's going to happen one minute from now. We don't know what's going to happen five minutes from now. We can have a good idea and sure those ideas could be played out. But the reality and the actuality and the truth 
life's ultimate truth is that we do not have any idea. We do not know. And so telling my friend, this is what I've been practicing. Being aware of the feelings, sitting with the feelings, acknowledging the feelings, exploring and being aware of what my mind is telling myself, and then allowing the narrative to change. So opening the mind up and reminding myself that I don't know, reminding my mind that I don't know. So there have been a couple of phrases I like to use. The first one is don't know mind. That's a really big thing. Um, I believe it's actually from a book. Uh, don't quote me on any of this, but I'm almost certain it's from a book. And um, it's something I've used off and on throughout the years, and it's been extremely beneficial. So especially now going through this extreme fear, um, it's been very, very helpful in reminding myself, don't know mind. Another thing I've been doing in general is just, I don't know. I don't know what could happen. I don't know. Don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And being okay with that. And then the third thing, and I recently read this and it really resonated and it felt good. And it's the person said, I associate, and I wish I knew where I'd seen it because I would love to give that person credit. So if it was you, you know, send me a screenshot and I will be happy to give you some credit. Um, but that individual had said that they associate the unknown with God. Now that works for me um, because I don't want to say God has different variations because I don't want to get into that. But I do want to say that like you can use the universe, you can say life, you can change God with whatever works for you. So what I've been doing when that fear is starting to creep back in is tell myself or just say repeatedly to myself, God, 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 because it really is all that unknown, you know, <laughs> like in the mind creating ideas and conceptualizing things to fill that unknown with things it thinks it knows. Um, so just reminding myself of like God, but knowing that's associated with the unknown and it just really is breeding a lot of peace and st it starts to feel much better and I start to feel uh, so much more in control. So I just wanted to share with you all a couple of things that have helped me. But again, that ultimate life truth, life's ultimate truth of the fact that we don't know anything. We don't know anything. We just think we do. And really, I don't even think it's us. I think it's our mind making its biggest attempts to keep itself busy. And I'm almost to the point, at least with my mind, maybe that it almost seems to like, well, if we can create this situation and if it's not the best, that gives us one more thing we get to work on. Like, oh, yay, it's jumping for joy at, at the thought of having to figure out a solution. But if I just remove myself from the idea of having to figure out the solution in the first place and that the solution will arrive, um, you know, by not knowing, again, not knowing what can happen. Now, I do want to say that there have been a few times when I've really, really practiced this um, to the point of where it was like just continual and more or less in an effort to, to manifest something. And it, it did work. So I guess for me, knowing that I've utilized that skill, you know, don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But to also see that it had a very positive outcome and resolve in my life really validates the utilization of it. So I'm not going to sit here and preach to you that, hey, you should do this, you should practice this, try that. When I'm, when, what my attempt here is to just give you some skills that hopefully you will utilize and you will see for yourself the effect that this will have. I want to go back to that fear and I, I really want to make it clear. I don't like to say I'm sorry unless like it's something I've done. I'm not that person who's like, like, oh, this happened, you know, it's not your fault at all, but you're like, oh, I'm sorry, that's not me. I'm like, oh, okay, that's unfortunate, but I'm not sorry. I'm not the one that, but, you know, I'm sorry 
I really rather apologize um, if something's my fault. So I, I, and I do, I apologize. But being sorry about something is not something I normally do. But I do want to say that I am sorry um, if you're out there and you're feeling this way. Because I know firsthand how absolutely horrible it feels and how alone you can feel. And I want to make it very, very clear right now that you are not alone. You are not alone. And, and for you to understand that. Overall, I want to say thank you as always for watching and listening. Let me know down in the comments how you feel about this video. Um, if you have any other ideas as to what life's ultimate truth is, let's hear it. If you have enjoyed this video, can relate to this video, or know somebody that may have found it beneficial at all, I don't know, but hit the thumbs up button for me. Share it if you think anybody else could utilize it. And if you haven't subscribed, I would definitely appreciate that. As always, thank you all so much for watching.